securely backing up your Bitcoin wallets is very, very important, especially when it comes to protecting your funds and your seed phrase from the elements like fire damage, water damage, and corrosion. One of the best and most robust steel backups on the market right now is the Cedar. Uh, it has a unique uh, capsule and disc design, which will house and secure your seed phrase from the aforementioned risks. Today, we're going to take a look at how to use the Cedar starter set, which comes with a lot of different stuff. We're going to show how to transfer your seed and appropriately store it. And we're also going to take a look at the differences between Cedar and some of the other steel backup solutions on the market today. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. HODL THE BITCOIN Before we dive in, shout out to sponsors of the show HODLHODL.com if you're buying Bitcoin and you have some priorities in mind like peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and no KYC, this is the place to be. You can sign up with nothing more than an email address. Once you're in, just choose your currency, your payment method, and your amount, and you can start browsing uh, offers immediately and beginning stacking non-KYC sats. They also have a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. You can check them out today. There is a link down below if you want to help the show in the process. Uh, now, when you do stack some sats, you're going to want to secure them with some of the best hardware on the market and CoinKite is killing it. I love everything they're doing. The Cold Card Mark IV, of course, is my go-to hardware of choice and I've got all of their other goodies as well, like the Tap Signer, the Sats card, the block clock, uh, the open dimes, all of that stuff. And coming very soon, which I'm excited about, is the cold card Q1. Uh, it should drop either near the end of the year or the begin, uh, beginning of next year. And uh, if you want to reserve that or grab anything else I mentioned, just head to coinkite.com. Use code BTC Sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Now, if you want to dive into a little bit even more robust setups, you can take a look at multisig, namely assisted multisig through Nunchuck's Honey Badger. So what is Honey Badger? Basically, you can download Nunchuck on your phone. You can set up a multisig wallet with uh, either tap signers or cold cards or a variety of other hardware options. It holds your hand through the entire process. And once you are set up, you have built-in inheritance planning and all of the tools at your uh, disposal to secure your funds. Nunchuck holds one key, you hold the rest, and they become your signer of last resort. Furthermore, the entire thing is also KYC free, so you don't need to give up your personal information to set up and have Nunchuck work for you. Check them out, again, nunchuck.io. Links are down below. And finally, shout out to startanine.com, your sovereign computing solution. Love these guys, and I am currently running my own, of course. These are plug and place devices that allow you to run your own Bitcoin node, a Lightning node, and host your own data like files, passwords, photos, and plenty more. They've got everything from entry level all the way up to what I'm running, which is the Start9 Server Pure, which is an absolute beast. Uh, everything comes in this handy dashboard and you can control everything either at home on your local network or on the fly from anywhere in the world over Tor. Be sure to check them out. Again, start9.com and uh, start running your Bitcoin node today. Anyways, with that, we're going to dive into the Cedar. So let's start out by talking uh, prerequisites. What are you gonna need to know to dive into this video? Um, and just anything you need to be prepared. Um, in terms of prerequisite knowledge, you don't need an awful lot. Basically, if you're diving into using Bitcoin wallets, um, obviously you should be aware that a Bitcoin wallet will have a series of seed words or rather, uh, human readable English words that it spits out as a backup. This is a copy of the keys to your money. You can think of it much like a copy of the key to your house. If anybody gains access to that key, they can unlock whatever that key unlocks. In this case, your Bitcoin. And so you want to make sure those backups are uh, stored very securely. Um, 
So yeah, we're basically going to be walking through how to properly use a system and um, and and how the CDOR itself works. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's nice to have somebody watch in case there's any little mistakes that are made along the way. Now, in terms of what are you going to need? Well, um, the CDOR starter set comes with pretty much everything you need. Uh, so you can see here on their website, um, it comes with a uh, a heavy mallet, which I've got mine right here. Uh, you've got um, this little disc uh, shaped thing in the bottom that basically helps you line up where your letters are going to go when you stamp in your words. Uh, it comes with a capsule and all these little discs in which each individual word will go on. And it also ha comes with number and letter tie, um, stamps that help you actually get the appropriate digits where they need to go. Um, the Starter Set Plus comes with an additional capsule and discs so that you can do two full seed phrases. So depending on what you need, um, you can grab uh, whatever is appropriate for you. Um, and then you can always order additional capsules and discs as you see fit if you're doing even more seed phrases or if you do want to swap out uh you, you know if you swap out your main seed phrase for a particular hardware wallet all you need to do are replace just the little discs inside which are are pretty cheap i think like uh on their on their uh, european site it's like nine or ten euros something like that um, and you don't need to go and replace the entire capsule because you can just swap out what's inside so that's more or less it so if you're just looking a single seed then um, just get the starter set if you want to back up two seeds uh, then get the starter set plus uh, and if you want more then of course order more discs and capsules um, nonetheless that's that's pretty much it you don't need to you don't need to know too much more than that you need to know that uh, you'll have a bitcoin wallet it's going to give you 12 or 24 words and uh, you're going to stamp them into these little discs and secure them inside of the capsule so let's take a look inside the box and and uh, see everything uh, and and pull it out and take a closer look at some of the things you might need to know about the products therein Oh, and one more thing, when we do get to using the seed ore and setting up our seed, uh, you're going to want a sturdy surface, not like a rickety table. Um, obviously, you can imagine if you're using a mallet, you want something that's actually going to stay still and uh, you'll see in a moment. But anyways, let's dive into the box here. Okay, so I've got here in front of me basically everything that would come with the starter set plus. Uh, so that has the additional capsule and everything, but let's let's take a look inside the main box here so This is just some some extras, but uh, the main box when you swing it open You're gonna have a full instruction manual, which I mean We're gonna go through it, but uh, this is nice to have a physical copy as well it walks you through everything we're gonna do here um, you have this uh, big mallet and again, it is very robust. Yes, that is metal. It's not, <laughs> it's nothing uh, rubber or anything like this. This is a solid metal, uh, yeah, <laughs> mallet there. Uh, you've got this disc. And so this disc is where you're going to be kind of using it to set up your discs before you actually stamp them. Um, you also have uh, this is the, the placer, and so more or less, you're going to be lining that up with, okay, word one is here, and so you line it up, and then you'll have the, the letters uh, go in and stamp them from there. We'll get into that when we get there. Uh, you've got your, your capsule here that comes in the main box. We'll unscrew this in a minute. By the way, I got mine laser engraved with my logo, which is pretty cool. You can do that if you do order it um, from Europe. Uh, but you can order it without the engraving uh, from the U.S. and from Canada as well. Nonetheless, so that's here. We'll open that up in a second and take a look at it. Um, <laughs> funny enough, they sent uh, they sent uh, uh, earbuds so that if it's loud where you are, you can shield your ears. Uh, this here, these are the uh, the letters and the numbers. Let me get it out here. You'll see. Um, so top pulls off and these are all the, uh, the letters, the, the stamps that you would use. Uh, it's pretty simple there. And then, uh, the stickers or these stickers here. So these are seals. So once you've put together your seed inside of your seed ore, you can actually put one of these tamper evidence stickers on it. 
Um, and so that if anybody ever plays with it and opens it up, you will be aware. Um, so that's kind of handy as well. So yeah, more or less, that's what comes in the box. This is a secondary uh, capsule, again, with inside, there's all these little discs. Let's take a look at what the discs look like. Okay, so I've just uh, unscrewed it here. You can see it just threads out. You pull up, and there are discs, discs inside here. Um, and then this little uh, top part will unscrew as well. Uh, they send more than enough discs to do a 24, uh, 24 word seed phrase. Um, I counted there were 28 discs in here. So if you have any mess ups, don't worry. You've got a little play with it. You can always order more discs. And again, this part just, just screws off. Almost, there we go. Okay, and you can see they're just almost like little washers. Now there is one notable thing about them. If you notice, uh, it's not perfectly circular in the middle. And the reason for that is when you're lining it up here, um, it prevents it prevents it from shifting around as you're stamping it because it's uh, uh, hexagonal shaped in the middle here. So it kind of keeps it still so it doesn't shift around. You don't get overlapping of letters and stuff like that. So yeah, a little bit different than a regular washer. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. You uh, we'll, we'll go through the stamping process in a minute, um, but then everything will go into your capsule and screw together and uh, and then be sealed with a tamper evident seal. One other thing to note here, just under uh, where this um, where this plate was, uh, there's also uh, you can you can pop out this. And actually, I found just practicing the other day, this is very useful to place down and put the plate on top of it if you have like a. a um, a delicate tabletop, like if you're on on uh, you know some sort of stone or something, and you don't necessarily want to be smashing a mallet into it, that just gives you a little bit of cushion. And I did find that it didn't um, detract too much from the actual stamping itself. Uh, but otherwise, if you have a nice sturdy table or something like that that you're not as worried about, you don't necessarily have to have to use that. But it's there if you need it, and I'm going to use it today. So let's dive in. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've got everything that we need set up in front. So I've got the plate here, and I've also put the little foam circle underneath it just to protect my countertop here. I obviously moved from my office, so I have a sturdier solid um, underneath the plate, uh, so I don't get any, um, yeah, <laughs> so I don't get any wobbling and wiggling. Uh, I've unscrewed the capsule. I've got all of my uh, little discs out. I've got all my stamps ready and I've got um, uh, the uh, little adjustment that allows me to direct which slot I am labeling. So all we're going to do is we're going to take one of these discs and we're going to place it in and it will uh, it will just slot into place. It doesn't have too much play in, in terms of twisting. It should stay relatively still in place. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, around this plate, there are numbers. Down at the bottom, it says zero and one. And so this is to label actually what seed word it is, whether it's seed word number one, two, three, up to 24. And uh, this is helpful because as, as robust as this is, imagine a nightmare scenario where you know, your kid gets into it and, and opens it up and the, the discs uh, are, are no longer in order. Well, you can just reorder them again because they're all numbered. So that's very nice. Um, unlike some other solutions where, you know, if, if things come out of order, all of a sudden you would have data loss and you may not be able to recover. This is not the case here. So I've got my plate. I've got my disc inserted. And now I'm going to take... Uh, this thing, it just has a little hole in the middle. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, there's a, a, a little pointer. And the pointer is what position you want to stamp. So I'm going to start with the pointer down and then flatten everything else out. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to look, I'm going to select the, uh, the one because this will be number one. Um, I'm going to select that stamp. 
Once I've selected the appropriate stamp, you're gonna look at the actual stamp and you're gonna be looking for uh, the engraving. And you want the engraving to face yourself, okay? So I'm going to, this is a one. And so as long as the engraving is facing myself, I know I'm good. So I'm gonna press that down until it's flush. And then I'm gonna take my mallet and I'm just gonna hold things in place. It will be a little bit loud, but I'm gonna give it three pretty good hits. All right, I'm now going to, you can lift off and take a peek and I can see that that uh, stamped in pretty well. I'll, uh, I'll take a look at it a little bit closer once we get through everything, but I'm now gonna to move to the other position and uh, I'll take out this stamp and I'm gonna put a zero there. So it'll be word number one or zero one. So we'll stamp that in. Once again, I look for the engraving that should be facing me. All the way down and I'll give it uh, three good hits here. And just lift and double check. Looks pretty good to me. All right pull this out and now I can start with my seed word again what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going uh, letter one two three four and in this instance you can get a lot more data than you might have gotten um, with uh, some of the tile options or the plate options you can actually get in most instances the entire word onto your disk uh, which is great because the more data that you are able to keep track of the better and so that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to put in a word here. Again, I don't have a seed phrase in front of me, but just for uh, demo purposes, I'll, uh, I'll, maybe I'll do uh, sessions. And so that should fill out the entire plate. So we'll go through that. You don't need to see me do exactly uh, that whole thing, but I will do the first letter anyway. So I'll grab the appropriate letter. And so now the way that you're going to orient this is because I wanted my letters at the bottom, but now because we're going all the way around, think of the middle peg as the bottom. And so you're going to have the arrow pointing upwards towards where you're stamping. And then I'm going to take this and I'm looking for the engraving. Okay. So the S for sessions, and that's going to be facing me and I'm looking up towards where I'm stamping, okay? I place it, give it a few good hits. And there we go, I got my letter. I'm gonna go all the way around, I'll rotate, I'll get the next letter, and we'll be back once I get through. All right, so I can now see that I've got my uh, my disc and it says sessions and it's word 01. Of course, not a real seed word, but you get the point. Um, and the nice thing about this, because this doesn't have a lot of play to move around, if you did one of your stamps and you thought to yourself, ah, I'd like it a little bit deeper, a little bit more distinct, um, you're not gonna really accidentally stamp in the wrong place because because of this thing here and the plate, you can perfectly position to where you need to stamp over top of the existing stamp. So that's one of the great things about this is um, there's not a lot of margin for error here because this thing is so efficient at properly placing your stamps. So anyways, I can now plunk that out. And so what I would do is I'd say, okay, well, there's word number one, plunk that in here. I would place it on and I'd go through my entire seed phrase and get that all placed in here, all 24 words or 12, depending on what I was doing. Now, once I get all of my uh, seed words in here, just as an example, and remember I've got, I've got leftovers in case there are mistakes that are made in the process. Um, not to fret, <laughs> I've got second chances and third and fourth chances. Uh, but anyways, I get all of these on here I'm going to uh, screw on the top and then it stays on pretty tight. Totally fine. So that's what it's going to look like there. Um, and then I'm going to take this and I'm simply going to slide it in. I'm going to screw it all together like this. Okay. So that's, and this thing is 
it is super solid, it's really thick as well. And then what I'm gonna do uh, to make it tamper evident is I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna peel off one of these stickers. These are also, the stickers are, I notice are numbered as well. So if somebody had one of these stickers, uh, they'd also, in order to fool you, um, they would also need to have a properly numbered sticker. So that's kind of cool too. But anyways, nonetheless, I would just place this right over the edge there, get it nice and flush. And now I've got a tamper evidence sticker there, and this can be put in a safe, put somewhere uh, away from prying eyes. Of course, if uh, if you're worried about somebody getting a hold of your sheet phrase, taking a peek, and and uh, you not knowing, you can also in most wallet softwares attach a passphrase on top of your seed phrase. I have videos on that, on that and uh, I'll include that in the show notes here. But um, yeah, so this is what you're looking at and this is what you're gonna store safely. And um, we're gonna talk about next just how resilient this is. Like what, what can this capsule stand up to in the testing that was done um, with this product, which is again, one of the unique things I think I've seen about it. So let's jump into that next. I also just wanted to show kind of the uh, the difference here. You know, I, in the demo video initially, I wasn't hitting as hard. Uh, this just shows kind of how deep into the metal you can get if you really give it some good hits. And uh, perhaps, again, I had that little cushion underneath because of the surface I was working on. But if you can get like a workbench or like get a floor or something, you know, a cement floor or something where you're really able to give it some good swings, um, you know, this is, you know, super deep into the actual disc. And you can see like any, you know, you could, you could put this through a lot and you'd still be able to retain the data and see um, everything. And again, if it, if it doesn't feel deep enough the first time through, you have that perfect marker where you can, uh, uh, readminister some, some, uh, additional pressure with the mallet and really etch that in there. So anyways, there's a, a good example for you. So let's talk a little bit about, um, Again, kind of the, the differences between uh, the seed ore system and some of the other options on the market. Um, there's different, definitely varying levels of quality um, across different types of uh, metal backups out there. Um, there's some that I've played with that feel pretty trinkety and, and pretty uh, like, like they wouldn't hold up to much. And then there's some that feel pretty robust. Um, and you know a lot of like the the plate designs, obviously those are, are pretty robust because there's no moving parts or anything. But um, what I'll what I'll say just as a, a general about the Cedar is that um, it's it is uh, the the quality of materials that they've used is is notable. Like this thing is is sol I already said it. It's solid. Um, it feels like it could really take a beating and be totally fine. Um, and in that realm, let's chat about the stress tests that they put it through. So uh, this is on the CDOR website, but they just kind of went and walked through all of the stress tests they put it through. So basically they, they uh, put it through um, uh, this crazy industrial, I, I don't know exactly what it is, some sort of crazy oven type thing. They heated it up to 1100 degrees Celsius uh, for 180 minutes. They brought it out. This is, by the way, this is like beyond what would be experienced in a house fire. They brought it out. And uh, as you can see by the tiles, there was no data loss there. Uh, they also put it through um, uh, an industrial, uh, like a, a hydraulic press. Um, and obviously, like that's not going to affect the individual tiles, but you know, you, you put it through enough stress and anything will break anything. Uh, but they put, it was 9,600 kilograms before it actually, um, you know, compressed the the capsule, um, at which point they were actually still able to open it up without any special tools. Um, so no data loss there either words. And actually in their blog here, they said you could drive seven Lamborghinis over it simultaneously without damaging the actual safe, which is kind of hilarious. Um, 
Anyways, and then they also put it in hydrochloric acid to check on, uh, on corrosion and um, there were no signs of degradation. Um, and so feasibly it would uh, hold up against any sort of long-term corrosion, at least over the length of uh, your lifetime. Um, so yeah, all in all, uh, basically it's, it's super resilient to all of the elements it would be exposed to. Um, and I know some of you will be familiar with Jameson Lopp and his stress tests that he did on wallets. Um, unfortunately at the time, CDOR didn't exist. However, they did meet him at, uh, they did meet him in Prague this year, uh, for BTC Prague and kind of walked him through and he gave it the Lopp seal of approval. So that's another thing to uh, consider here. Now, I do want to also talk about um, kind of some of the benefits because this is like a, an in-between between the resilience of, of like really hardcore materials and the replaceability of something like a tile system. And what I mean by a tile system is some of you may have seen uh, options on the market uh, for uh, storing seed phrases in steel and it, it'll be like a sliding tile mechanism so you have a whole bunch of little letters and they're the tiny little tiles and you slide them um, on the kind of these guiders or these tracks into like a wallet type deal and then you seal it up and I mean again Steel is always going to be better than just having it on paper. Um, but in some of the stress tests like hydraulic presses or very extreme fire with some of those track and tile systems, if the metal warps or if it gets compressed or something like that, if you have those tracks bend, then you could run into instances of data loss. And the reason being, obviously, is it matters the order of all those tiles. And once they fall out of order and you don't know what words they were, you can't just reconstitute that out of nothing. So that's you know something to consider there. Um, whereas with the capsule design, as I was saying earlier, in a nightmare scenario where, like, first of all, you're not gonna have data loss if it stays in the capsule. But like, let's say one of your kids somehow finds it, which keep it away from your kids, but let's say somebody finds this, they open it up, they uns take the time to unscrew the top, unscrew the bottom, and then let all of your seed words fly. They're numbered natively on the disks. So you can then replace them back in order and, and have full data retention as long as you have access to the, you know, the, the, the actual disks themselves. So that's nice in that instance. The other thing um, about the disk and capsule design that is also beneficial is in comparison to the plate design. There's a trade-off there um, in that with a, a, a solid plate, and those are the plates where it has like a grid along the side, like the, the word number and then the letters, and you use a press and a punch, and you put the plate in, and then you just store the plate. Obviously very robust, um, would stand up to all of the things that we said before. Um, the versatility with the disc system is uh, if, say, you want to swap out your seed phrase, maybe you're, you're kind of migrating to a new wallet and you just want a brand new seed. Well, with the, with the plate, you just you, you got to toss it away, like, right? That, that, that seed phrase is no longer of use to you, so you need a whole new plate. And, you know, sometimes those are... I don't know, 50 bucks a pop or, or, or more, depending on where you get them from. Um, with this thing, you can just order the discs. And so you don't need to replace the actual uh, capsule. You don't need to replace the mallet and all of that stuff and all of the punches. Uh, you just get the little discs and you can get those for really, really cheap and just uh, and stack them up in there and you're totally fine. Um, so yeah, that gives that versatility of switching out your seed phrase. The other benefit of the disk design is actually it gives you room for additional information. So maybe you have multiple wallets and you want a way of knowing which is which, what wallet are you dealing with? Well, you can actually, they give you additional disks and so you can stamp onto it while well, this is savings and just have that on one of the rings and then you can look and be like, oh, this is my savings seed or 
uh, you know, you, you can have different seeds for different purposes. And so you can put that type of information. Oh, this is my my cold card wallet or, oh, this is whatever wallet I'm using. And, and you can designate that or this is seed one of my two of three multisig. And you can put that information on an actual disk. You can also add things like maybe you want to add like the derivation path or maybe you want to add uh, the wallet fingerprint or just any other information you can put that on a disk and put it in here and it's all equally protected so all that uh, information can be redundant in a single form factor and stored aside um, so yeah th that's kind of my my impression of of what differentiates this from other options uh, out there on the market currently So again, just diving into final thoughts here, I'll reiterate a little bit of what was just kind of said and shown to you, but um, the, the quality of the, the product in the box that you get when you get the starter set, it's, it's super robust. Like this thing um, feels like, like I could run over it with seven Lambos and it'd still be okay. Um, yeah, and it's very easy to use. The, you, you can, um, Again, go back and restamp something if you feel you've not uh, em embossed it well enough on the disc. Uh, there's a lot of you, uh, ability to swap out uh, different parts of the, the information held within, and it's resilient to the elements. And that's kind of all that you're looking at uh, out of a, a steel backup. So, yeah. I'm going to give this an A+. Um, I'm going to be using this myself. And uh, and also that laser engraving on the top, I've got to say, is pretty badass. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that as well. Um, please do let me know what you think about this, just having a look at it. Um, and Or if you've used it, please let me know in the comments down below what your experience was like with CEDAR. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit that like button just down below. That always helps a ton. It's right there. Do it now. Uh, you can also hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a new video or tutorial on the channel. Uh, if you do want to check out Seed Ore, uh, there's some links in the show notes down below where you can grab them. Depending on where you are in the world, you can click different links if you're over in Europe uh, versus if you want cheaper shipping from the US or Canada. All of those links are down below and uh, using those links will also get you 5% off and help the channel simultaneously. Uh, beyond that, if you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the other uh, sponsors that I mentioned before, Hoddle Hoddle, Coin Kite, Nunchuck, and Start9. Uh, you can also hit up my website, which is btcsessions.ca. There's a ton of free educational material there. If you need some hand-holding with any of your learnings on anything Bitcoin day-to-day, -day, you can book me for private one-on-one -on -one sessions there. And you can also check out my upcoming workshops as I travel around and offer in-person workshops on a variety of things, of which I do have one just around the corner happening in LA around Pacific Bitcoin, but there's always something going on. So be sure to check there under the in-person workshops section. And finally, if you really loved what you saw, you can always drop a Bitcoin tip. There's a tip section up top and uh, hey, that'll lead you to my BTC page, page and you can uh, send over some sats, whatever you see fit. Either way, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. See you guys next time for your daily session. Hold all the Bitcoin.